All right, hopefully the internet's good. Let's see. Uh-oh, I'm probably going to have to go upstairs. Let's see. I may have to go upstairs, folks. We'll see. Yo, what's up? Yeah, I'm going to go upstairs now. Okay. Dirty, dirty little people. Hold on, guys. We got to go upstairs. I got to get close to the router. That's the connection for your glory. Let's do this. Okay. All right. Please, my God, in Jesus' name, bless the connection for your glory, Lord, and bless the screen, please, my God. Okay. Sorry, guys. I tried. And now I'm back. I'm close to the router now. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's see how it's going to work now. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you stop, buddy? <laughs> Please, my God. Okay. How's it now? I'm now close to the router, folks. Let's ask the Father, Son, and Spirit, and the infinite love, compassion, and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. To bless the internet connection, please, my God, please, in Jesus' name, Father, rebuke all evil spirits and cover us by the blood of Jesus. Right? Please, my God, you don't need us, we need you. Bless this internet connection, my God, and help me, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name, do course to get better internet connection. Please, my Father, please, Lord Jesus, help us, help us, help us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Please bind up all evil spirits, Father. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Surround us with a wall of fire from the Holy Spirit. And keep all evil spirits away in the name of Jesus. Rebuke them, Father. <clears throat> Father, bless the internet connection. Bless the session. Fill me. Fill us all with the Holy Spirit. Anoint me to speak truth without error and to recall the passages correctly and perfectly, Father, and purify my motives, not to do it for the praise of men, not to do it for money, do it for the glory of Jesus, and save me from being unnecessarily offensive, crucify our flesh, save us from our flesh, save us from Satan and his agents, even corrupt wicked judges, demons, use of the devil, save us from the world, Father, and make us the everlasting possession of Jesus Christ, your Son, and bless them, Father, who are listening, Fill them, fill me with wisdom, knowledge, understanding from your spirit and help us to know your word more perfectly, love it <clears throat> more passionately and live it out by the power of your spirit for the glory of Jesus. Please, my God, in Jesus' name, Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' name, Yahweh, Father, says, we rebuke the evil one, Father. Lord Jesus, rebuke the evil one. Holy Spirit, rebuke the evil one. Keep them away from us and bless our loved ones. Bless my daughters. Seal them. Seal us. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Nisi, Yahovah Shalom, <clears throat> Yahovah Ishmael Chama, Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Okay, guys, we're going to trust by the grace of God the internet connection will stay strong. I'm right here by the router. Hopefully, man, we're getting close to like 180, man. I will rejoice when I see a thousand. Yes, I want numbers. If Hater Wood can get it, I want to get it. All right, bless our daughter. Yes, amen in Jesus' name, Father, Holy Spirit. Okay, okay, folks. <clears throat> uh, today I had some time to do a live stream right now. My brother's not here, and by next week, no later than Monday of next week, if God wills, I'll be in my new place. So pray for provision because I'm going to have to get furniture and try to get internet connection set up there. So pray for provision, for grace and favor, doors of blessing to be open, doors of opposition to be shut tight by the grace of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow's a big day, February 10. So please pray and fast that God will silence that judge, muzzle that dog, chase and rebuke that dog, that filthy dog of a judge in Jesus' name. Please, Lord, so that I can be free to serve the Lord 
and not to be afraid of some corrupt, evil, filthy, wicked judicial system. I've come to hate the judicial system with a passion now. So guys, pray, okay? Because she can hinder me. She can be so demonic, satanic, filled with the devil, which she is. May the Lord Jesus rebuke her severely for the misery she's inflicted on people's lives, not just mine. And make my life uncomfortable here. And pray for miraculous favor here locally, right? Locally, especially for February 13, that God will give me favor here with the local authorities to stay here. Because I know he will bring my daughters to me. Yep, that's how it is, guys. We're going to have to trust that the buffering will be removed by the grace of God. Uh, now it should be okay. Is that okay now? In Jesus' name, he'll bring my daughters to me and keep that filthy dog, that judge of the devil. Lord Jesus, rebuke. Come on. All right. See, I'm smashing the internet connection right now. I don't know why the internet the internet's getting worse, it seems, not better. Right? I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I was pounding the internet. I'm going to start, I'm going to bust it up. I'm going to break it, right? And I know some people take it as a joke, but believe it or not, evil spirits can't even distract us by making, <clears throat> making it more difficult because if you truly believe in the spirit realm, and you truly believe they're evil spirits, they'll do anything, even disrupt internet connection to stop us from glorifying Jesus Christ. Right? So I know some people laugh at that. Ah, you're praying God bless the internet connection? Yeah, because everything good is from the Lord, even good internet connection. So we'll wait a few more minutes. We'll begin. I know, man. A lot of people can testify. They've seen supernatural <clears throat> phenomenon, manifestations, even of evil spirits. And you know what's ironic? You even have shows now like on the Science Channel or the History Channel, where now you have people who are ghost hunters who are now documenting, documenting real life, real life document proof for spirits, for spirits, right? appearing in a tangible and a real way. And they're documenting it on television, right? So now the demons are more bold in appearing visibly and doing stuff that they're documenting it, right? Ghost hunters and so forth. Actual demonic phenomenon, activity, and even appearances in visible form of these demons. But they don't call them demons, right? Because they don't have a biblical worldview. Right, But it's amazing how bold the demonic realm is and that they're now not hiding their presence. They're appearing in, I don't want to say miraculous because I like to use the term miraculous in reference to the true God, but in a visible, tangible way and doing things that are now being caught on <clears throat> video. That you cannot deny or defy. I don't know how the atheists get around that. But be that as it may. Right? In Jesus' name. So hopefully we'll get the regulars in by the grace of our God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Will the spiritual veil be open in the end times? Well, it's opening now, ma'am. Two, four, one. It's opening now. What's happening is the spirit realm is now being permitted by God to appear visibly in a tangible, real way, but it's a process in which it's slow and methodical in order to desensitize people and be open to accepting these spiritual manifestations as something good, not necessarily something evil. Right? Exactly. So hopefully we'll stay strong. I'm just waiting a few more minutes by the grace of God. Right? Anyway. How many of you guys saw the live stream that I did at the conference with Vocab, David Wood? You guys know that Friday, Saturday, there was a conference. 
and I was the plenary speaker, right? I did the plenary session on Friday. I don't know, man. It's the buffering's getting worse and worse. I wonder why. What's wrong with his connection? I don't know. The buffering's getting worse and worse. Right? You guys know who's reading for me? February 10 is still tomorrow for us. Uh-oh. Yeah, we'll act 17 apologetics. If you send me some of the millions that you make, I can get better internet connection, hater. You're making all the money, and here I am. I got a corrupt legal system after me. Thanks for the love. But God willing, when I move into my, my place, I'm going to get top-notch internet, which is next Monday, God willing. Next Monday, I should be in. Hater would. Anyway. We'll wait a few more minutes before I begin, because if it's going to get bad, I'll just shut down. Right? This is my brother's internet, so he doesn't use the internet. What a hater, dude. This guy who says he's a Christian, believes in the Bible, there's a spirit realm. He laughs at these things. Uh -huh. Chase after ghosts. Uh -huh. I didn't say they're ghosts, man. They're demons. But they're now becoming more emboldened to manifest and deceive people like you. Thank Jesus he saved you. Your proof that even people who are beyond hope can be saved. Your proof that God does the impossible. Because only God could save someone like you, buddy. Hater would. Put down the hater aid. I hope it's getting better. Anyway. Before I begin the session, do you guys have any questions? Because I just want to wait for a few more minutes to make sure... This buffering doesn't get worse and becomes a hindrance. No, James Payne, he's a pain. You should call him David Payne, and you should take the name Wood, James Wood. Any questions? Maybe a question or two just to prepare us before I go into it, because I want to talk about using the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove the Trinity, and we're going to spend some time in the book of Revelation. No questions? Everyone okay? All good in the hood? I saw a girl come into my church a few years ago, multiple voices coming out of her at the name. Yep. Yep, exactly. That happens because it is real. All right. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus loves us, is in love with us, and I pray by the Spirit we all we are all in love with Jesus. Why do you call yourself the prophet Muhammad? I don't get it. Uh, Tyler, I already covered that, Tyler. You got to go back and re-listen. I actually answered that, so I don't know uh, if I wasn't that clear. Because I did it in the sessions, and I did it in in the conference, right? See, so she's asking me, then how could Jesus be raised from the dead? Who told you they believed he was raised from the dead? Did you pay attention to what I said, that they believe that, yeah, they believe in Jesus' name, Lord. If you want me to shut down, I will. Your will be done. I'm not going to put up with this uh, buffering. They believe that the Archangel Michael was recreated with the memories of Jesus, and that's what they call a resurrection. Okay, guys, Are you guys listening to me, by the way? Let me explain what Joe's witnesses believe about the resurrection. Because if it, gets, if it keeps buffering and it's bad, I'm just going to shut down because I don't want to be a nuisance and a distraction to any of you. Okay, pay attention now. I need you guys to pay attention. Okay. Jehovah Witnesses believe that when you die, you are pretty much wiped out of existence. You don't exist at all. You're simply a memory in Jehovah's mind. Listen to what, I, what they believe. Don't take my word for, for it. Ask them. When you die, you're wiped out of existence. You don't exist at all. You're simply a memory in the mind of Jehovah. If Jehovah decides to resurrect you, then what the, he does is he recreates you. He recreates you, right? And when you're recreated, you'll be given all the memories of, your, of the life you lived before you were wiped out. So resurrection for them means a recreation 
where a person who doesn't exist anymore is now recreated. And when he's recreated, Jehovah will then put into that person the memories he had when he was alive before he was wiped out. Everyone with me there? Dinu, what's up? Dinu, what's going on? I guess you guys didn't want to hook up because you're busy doing your thing. Busy doing your thing, God. If it keeps it up, I'm shutting down, man. I'm not playing with this uh, and nonsense anymore. What do you mean it's my right arm, man? What are you talking about? Yeah. He knew Dinu. Yeah, if it keeps buffering, man, I'm going to shut down. I don't have time for this nonsense. Right? Anyway, for the rest of you, did you understand what Joe's witnesses believe about death and resurrection? Yep, it is, Lent Niles. It's ancient, man. He does use internet, so he doesn't care about updating. Okay. So let me repeat one more time. Joe's witnesses believe when a person dies, he no longer exists at all. He's wiped out of existence. He's simply a memory in Jehovah's mind. So if Jehovah decides to quote unquote resurrect that person resurrection means he will then recreate that person who's been wiped out of existence that person will be recreated and will have the memories that he had when he was alive on earth do you now understand what they believe about quote unquote resurrection do you not understand that before i move on okay the only ones who are not wiped out of existence when they die now, here's where it's going to get tricky. So let's just prepare you guys, trusting the internet will stay strong for the glory of Christ. So then we can go into the meat of the matter. They believe that when Jesus returned invisibly, because Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jesus will return physically visibly. Let me rephrase that. They believe Jesus began ruling the nations in 1914. Are you with me there? 1914 marked when Jesus started ruling. <clears throat> That's when he started ruling. Now, guys, understand the implication of that. According to Joe's witnesses, Jesus was not ruling in heaven until 1914. You with me there? He started ruling in the year 1914. When he started ruling, now listen to what I'm about to say. Listen to what I'm about to say. Anyone who's part of the 144,000, the anointed class, after Jesus started ruling, anyone who's part of the anointed class, right, the 144,000, when they die, they become spirit creatures and they go to heaven and start ruling with Jesus in heaven. So the only ones who are not wiped out of existence are the 144,000, the anointed class. So if you're part of the 144,000, part of the anointed class, now after Jesus began ruling, when you die, you become a spirit creature and you enter heaven and you reign with Jesus. Is it making sense now what they believe? Is it making sense now what they believe? But if you're not part of the anointed class, you're not part of the 144,000, then when you die, you cease to exist. You're wiped out until the resurrection. No, they don't believe that, Benny. I don't know why you're adding to my words. Where did you see me say, that they believe the millennial reign began in 1914. No, they don't believe that. The millennial reign will be after Armageddon, when Jehovah destroys the governments and the armies of this world. That's when the millennial reign will begin, and those who've been wiped out will be recreated if Jehovah wants to recreate them. Okay, so far do you get what they believe? Whether you understand why they believe it or not, I don't care right now. I want to make sure you understand what they believe, though. 
Because if I explain to you why they believe this, we're going to be here for two hours. Are you getting it? Okay, so no one's confused about what they believe. When I say what they believe, you understand this is what they believe. Now, why they believe it, I don't have time to unpack that now. It's too complicated, and we won't get into the meat of the matter. Okay, so sure no one's confused. Because I'm going to tell you what, what hell is, according to Joe's witnesses. There is no literal fire or even a spiritual fire, a lake of fire. They don't believe that. Jehovah's Witness believes hell refers to those individuals who are wiped out of existence and will never be recreated. That's what hell is. Jehovah's Witnesses believe hell is to be wiped out of existence without ever being recreated. That's hell. You ask them, what is hell? Hell is if you die and you're wiped out and God decides never to recreate you, quote unquote, resurrect you. That's hell. Abdul Aziz, why do you think Muhammad is real when he's a filthy pagan pedophile whore of the devil who raped women like your mother, treated him like whores, and called it muta, that filthy dog? Okay. Okay. Now, you understand what hell is for the Jehovah Witness? Do you understand what hell is for the Jehovah Witness? So now if someone asks you, what is hell according to the Jehovah Witness? What is hell according to the Jehovah Witness? Hell according to the Jehovah Witness you're wiped out of existence without ever being, quote-unquote, resurrected, recreated. Right? Now, here's what's ironic. Now, let me confuse you a little more. They do that those who've died and have been wiped out of existence, who are never given the opportunity to hear the message of Jehovah, Jehovah will recreate them. So they can be given a chance during the thousand-year reign to be taught about Jehovah. And if after that they reject it, then they'll be wiped out and never recreated again. You see how confusing it gets? That's all metaphorical. It's not literal, Tom Jones. Okay. Now let me confuse you a little more. Let me confuse you about what they believe a little more. Okay, listen up, because I need you to pay attention here, because I want you to get it. They believe that there have been people who died that had never been given the chance to hear about Jehovah and his good news. So because Jehovah is a fair God, a merciful God, he'll recreate all those people during the millennial reign so that the Jehovah's Witnesses will teach them about Jehovah and the good news. And then if they reject, then they'll die and never be recreated. Steve, stop buffing, man. Stop buffing, dude. Everyone with me there? Did you guys hear what I said? Do you understand what they believe now? If you have people who died who never heard of Jehovah and his good news, Jehovah and his mercy will recreate them to live in the millennial reign, the thousand-year reign, to be taught by Jehovah's Witnesses, and then if they reject, they'll be wiped out. When they die. Okay. So you got that part before the buffering? Okay, good. Like I said, if it keeps up, I'm going to just shut down. I don't have time for this nonsense, right? Man, we went from 98 to 89. What happened, bro? What about sin, Tom Jones? Of course they believe in sin because it's in the Bible. So, But what about it? 
what are you asking me exactly about what their belief of sin? Before I move on. So we'll begin in a minute if it keeps going strong. If not, I'm done, man. It wasn't meant to be for, to, for me to teach today. Okay. Everyone with me there or no? Who cares whether I've debated or not, Mason G? Hey, didn't we block you last time, Mason G? Act out of line, you get blocked again, Mason G. Okay. After death, how are you gonna how are you going to be sinless after death when you believe when when they believe you die, you cease to exist? I have no idea what you're saying, Tom Jones. Why would you ask me a question when I just told you when you die, according to them, you cease to exist? You sure you guys are following me? Because Tom Jones shows he's not following me. Ash. Say calm down, Assyrian, one more time, sister. Please. Because I like to be told what to do. On my own channel. Okay, so... Clear so far what they believe? If it's clear so far, I'm going to give you one final point. One final point. Remember what I said hell is, according to Joe Witness. Hell is to be wiped out of existence with no hope of resurrection. No hope of resurrection, right? Okay, that's what they believe. Do you know they believe that they can definitely say for certain... There are three people who are in hell. There are three people in hell. They know of three people are in hell. And what do they mean by hell? Three people have died who are wiped out and never will never be resurrected, recreated. Three. So Jehovah's Witness, when they say three people in hell, they mean three people have died, wiped out of existence, who won't be recreated. Three. They'll tell you we know of three at least, definitely, that will never be recreated because they're in hell, wiped out forever. That's what they believe. Can anyone guess who the three are? A while back, I mentioned this in one of my sessions I did months ago. I had mentioned this. According to Joe's witnesses, there are at least three people that definitely are in hell, meaning They've died. They've been wiped out. They won't be recreated, resurrected. Yep, Jay got it. Adam, Eve, and Cain. According to them, Adam and Eve, because of their sin, have been wiped out and will never be recreated. Not Cain. I'm sorry, Jay. Jay, I should smash your face. Not Cain, man. Judas. Sorry. I'll let this guy deceive me. Why, you deceiver. Not Cain. Judas. Adam, Eve, and Judas. Adam, Eve, and Judas are in hell. They've died. They've been wiped out. They'll never be recreated. You are a JW? You sure about that? I don't, I'd, be, I'd be shocked if you're a JW. You wouldn't be listening to this. So is everyone with me so far? Everyone with me so far, what they believe about death, resurrection in quotation marks, hell. They can't. They can't listen to other sermons or read the literature of those who are not Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. So did you get it so far? So we can now go into Revelation. Okay. Bless you too, Michael. Uh, may the Lord bless us all. Pray for me tomorrow, big day tomorrow. I'm tired and drained. The Lord doesn't show up. There's nothing I can really do. I doubt, I doubt you, dear JW, because a JW cannot be on a channel listening to someone criticizing their organization and being good standing with their organization. And I hope you leave them if you are and worship the true triune God. Okay, now, with that said, 
Why ask why, guy? Just live with it and accept that's what they believe. Get over it. And now, if you got it, is it making sense? Can we now go into their Bible, use their Bible by the grace of the Holy Spirit to prove the Trinity? Sorry, God, bad, bad words of you. I don't know what you're talking about, George. Yep, they are. I know that, Freddie Mills. That's why I said, if you want to witness the Jehovah's Witness, you don't tell them what it means. You ask them questions, enough questions, and pray the Holy Spirit will use the questions to penetrate the hearts. Okay, so if we're now ready, if you guys now are focused and you're trucking along and you're not confused, we can now start. God bless you, DJ, next. My man, DJ. Are we ready? Invite some more people. Let's get it to 300, 400, 500, 10,000. Okay, ready? All right. We're now going to explore the book of Revelation using the Jehovah Witness Bible. I'm trying to show you how to use their Bible to prove the Trinity. Their Bible to prove the Trinity. Okay? What's the goal of these sessions? You asked me to do it, so I'm doing it by the grace of God. Teach you how to use their Bible to prove the Trinity. Teach you what verses to quote and what verses to avoid. By the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling us to then use this information until we see more Joe's witnesses fall in love with Jesus. Clear? Are we ready? Not really, Angelica Gua, I, because I had to prepare you for the response to that, but I'm not doing that today. Jay, Jesus has words for you. He who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Jay, notice what he said, it's hard for me to leave. There's a chance my parents will basically disown me. Jesus says, he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. John 10, 34 to 39, read it. He said, count the cost. I came to divide families. So if you fear being shunned by your parents, then Jesus says, you're not worthy of me. I will disown you. Depart from me. Matthew 10, 34 to 39. We're not going to quote it. Just read it on your own leisure. Matthew 10, 34, 39. Guys, I didn't say John 10, did I? If I said John 10, Protestant, I'm going to smash your face in. Matthew 10, 34, 39. If I said, John, it's all first and last fall. You better repent. You don't have to quote it, Protestant. Matthew 10, 3, 4 through 9. And guys, thank Protestant and first and last. Lord Jesus bless them. They're now beatifying my YouTube page. They're adding thumbnails, making you look sleek and professional for the glory of Christ. And they're not getting paid for it. Now, Protestant, which part of don't quote Matthew 10, 34, 39 wasn't clear? The don't or the quote? Which part? Let me help you. Which part wasn't clear? You sinner. All right. Are we ready? If you guys are tired, because I'm tired, I'm fried. I can just shut down right now. I want to see who's ready. Okay. Let's use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to show how John in Revelation, listen to me, John in Revelation takes the Old Testament language, imagery, takes <clears throat> the attributes, functions, characteristics that the Old Testament ascribe, ascribes to Jehovah alone, takes that and applies it to the Father and the Son. See, Angelica, I don't think she's going to last long in this in this uh, session because I just told her in John 2, 19, 22, they have a response to her. And I don't have time to then show you how to use, use this passage against them and then refute their response. She quoted it again. She did. She quoted it again. Right. OK. Now, for the rest of you who are listening and not coming here to try and impress me with your knowledge and you're not going to impress me. You are listening to learn and benefit. 
I'm going to use the Joe Witness Bible to show that John in Revelation takes Old Testament passages, the language of the Old Testament to describe Jehovah, characteristics, functions, and titles that the Old Testament ascribed to Jehovah alone and applies it to the Father and the Son, thereby identifying Jehovah as the Father and the Son. Were you with me there, what I want to do? What I'm going to do right now? Everyone got it? Everyone got it? All right. Let's begin in Jesus' name. Spirit, control, and guide the conversation. And bring more people for the glory of Christ. Okay, Jeremiah, chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. Let's begin. Jeremiah, chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. The Jehovah Witness Bible Proving the Trinity. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. Okay, let's get ready, folks. Jehovah Witness Bible. Go and proclaim in the years of Jerusalem. This is what Jehovah says. I will remember the devotion of your youth, the love you showed. The love you showed. Okay, watch here. Okay. When you were engaged to Mary, how you followed me in the wilderness in a land not sown. See, now pay attention to three. Pay attention to three. Okay. Israel was holy to Jehovah. The first fruits of his house. Anyone devouring him would become guilty. Disaster would come upon them, declares Jehovah. Did you guys see it? Israel, the first fruits of Jehovah, belonging to Jehovah. Israel, the first fruits of Jehovah. Israel, the first fruits belonging to Jehovah. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? Everyone with me? Israel, the first fruits of Jehovah. Did we get it or no? Okay. You sure you got it? Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. If it goes, if it does it again, I'm just gonna shut down, folks. Revelation 14, 4. These are the ones who do not defile themselves with women. In fact, they are virgins. These are the ones who keep following the Lamb no matter where He goes. These were bought from among mankind as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. As first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Did you catch it? Who caught it? The 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel. They are the first fruits of God and of the Lamb. But the Old Testament says Israel is the first fruits of Jehovah, not Jehovah and someone else. Who caught it? Who caught it? Did, is it sinking in? You sure? You're not bored yet and distracted by all these distractions. Okay, if you got that, what the Old Testament says about Jehovah alone, John takes that language and applies it to God and Jesus, thereby identifying God and Jesus as Jehovah. Okay, this is their Bible. All right, Isaiah 61, verse 6. Isaiah 61, verse 6. Watch, it's going to get better as long as the connection stays strong. Isaiah 61, verse 6. I don't know what one note means. <clears throat> As for you, you'll be called the priest of Jehovah. The priests of Jehovah, 
They will call you the ministers of our God. You will eat the resources of the nations. And about their glory, you will boast. Okay. Priests of Jehovah. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Revelation 20, verse 6. I forgot to mention something anyway. That's fine. Happy and holy is anyone having part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no authority. But they will be priests of God and of the Christ. They will be priests of God and of the Christ. One more time. They are priests of God and priests of Christ. And they will rule as kings with him for the thousand years. Wait, I'm confused. Only Jehovah and Jehovah alone has priests serving him, according to the Old Testament. New Testament says believers are priests of God, priests of Christ, priests of God and Christ, serving God in Christ. Who didn't see it? <clears throat> I don't know if you're catching it. What happened? Silence? God bless you, Mason. What happened? Silence? Old Testament says, believers are priests of Jehovah alone. Israel, first fruits of Jehovah alone. Revelation says, Israel, first fruits of God and Jesus. And believers are the priests of God and the priests of Christ Jesus. John, what are you doing? Why are you taking what the Old Testament says about Jehovah and applying it to the Father and the Son, to God and Christ? God bless you, Floyd. I don't know if it's sinking in because it looks like you guys are bored and tired. This should be blowing your mind away what John is doing in Revelation. Are you catching it or no? Not only is Jesus Jehovah, God the Father and Jesus the Lamb together are Jehovah. Okay. Ezekiel 37, 26 to 28. Ezekiel 37, 26 to 28. Okay, let's see. Notice this is the Jehovah's Witness Bible, folks. We're not using any other translation. Ezekiel 37, 26 to 28. Then, Matthew, you're retaining nothing. You're not even following along then. That's all you got? We're chosen by Jesus? Then maybe you... If you're not getting it. Okay. Ezekiel 37, 26 to 28. Okay, read with me. Ezekiel 37, 26 to 28. For some reason, it hurts you, and I'm going to enjoy it. Okay. I will make a covenant of peace with them. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an eternal covenant with them. Pay attention. If you don't pay attention, you're not going to get it. I will establish them and make them many and place my sanctuary among them forever. My tent will be with them, and I will be their God, <clears throat> and they will be my people. And the nations will have to know that I, Jehovah, am sanctifying Israel when my... That's good. You're not good enough for us. You need to go. Look at the appeal to sympathy like a little child, right? Oh, I guess I'm not good enough for you. <laughs> Children, man, we're producing a bunch of effeminates. Lord, save us from it. All right, did you guys get Ezekiel 37, 26 to 28? Netta, remind me to share something before I end it. Did you guys get Ezekiel 37, 26 to 28? Who, who who didn't get it? Everyone got it? Come on, guys. You got to be a little faster before the buffering gets worse. Okay. What did you get from Ezekiel 37, 26, 28? God says the day will come. I will put my sanctuary 
my temple, my tent in their midst, my temple, my sanctuary, not my temple and someone else's, my temple alone, my sanctuary alone will be in their midst. I will live in their midst and my tabernacle, my tabernacle alone will be in their midst, right? Did it say the tabernacle of Job and someone else? Take care, Andrew. See you soon. Did it say God's temple and the temple of someone else? Or the temple, the sanctuary of God alone will be in the midst of Israel? You sure you got it, right? By the grace of the trying God? Okay, so to keep that in the back of your mind, don't lose that thought. Now let's go to Isaiah 60, verses 19 and 20. Don't lose that thought. Keep it in mind, because if you're listening and understanding and following, you'll be blown away with what John does in Revelation and going out of his way to identify Jesus as Jehovah God along with the Father. John, a monotheistic Jew, takes the Old Testament and applies it Father and Son to identify Jesus as God with the Father, as Jehovah with the Father. Okay, Isaiah 60, 19 to 20. For you, the sun will no longer be a light by day. This is where you got to really pay attention by the power of the Holy Spirit. Take over, Spirit, for the glory of Jesus. For you, the sun will no longer be a light by day, nor will the shining of the moon give you light. <clears throat> For Jehovah will become for you an eternal light. You won't need the sun. You won't need the moon. Jehovah will be your light, and your God will be your beauty. No more will your sun set, nor will your moon wane. For Jehovah, not Jehovah and a creature, not Jehovah and someone else, Jehovah God alone will become for you an eternal light, and the days of your morning will have ended. So did you read? Jehovah alone is our eternal light. That's why we won't need the sun and moon because Jehovah alone will be our everlasting light. Jehovah's sanctuary, his sanctuary alone will be in our midst. His sanctuary alone, right? 2 Samuel 22, 29. <clears throat> you know I'm getting old. My voice... Second Samuel twenty two twenty nine. Second Samuel twenty two twenty nine. Let me know if you hear me. Okay. Second Samuel twenty two twenty nine. For you are my lamp. You are my lamp, O Jehovah. It is Jehovah who lights up my darkness. You are my lamp. Who's the lamp? Jehovah. Who's the everlasting life? Everlasting light? Who's the everlasting light? Jehovah. Whose sanctuary will be in the midst of his people? Jehovah. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, verses 22 to 25. Revelation 21, not just one daughter, Raja. Revelation 21, 22 to 25. Follow with me. Daughters, two, not one. Revelation 21, 22, 20, 25. I did not see a temple in it, for Jehovah God the Almighty is its temple. Also the Lamb is. Wow. One temple, that is Jehovah and the Lamb. And by the way, the word Jehovah is not in the Greek. It's the Lord God. They inserted the word Jehovah in their translation because they're perverts who pervert the Bible. But notice it says the temple in the new heavens, new earth, happens to be the Lord God and the Lamb. God and the Lamb together are the one temple. They are the one temple. Father and Son, God and the Lamb. Wow. What are you doing, John, with the Old Testament? What are you doing with the Old Testament? Now read 23 to 25. And the city has no need of the sun nor of the moon. That's Isaiah 60, 19 to 20. That's what he's alluding to. You won't need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God illuminated it, and its lamp was the lamb. Wow. 
and its lamp was the lamb. The lamb is the lamp, and the nations will walk by means of its light. One light, and the source of that one light, God and the lamb, father and his son, the two are the one source of that one light, and they're the one temple. And the nations will walk by means of its light. <clears throat> And the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will not be closed at all by day, for night will not exist. Did you catch it? Right? You guys caught it? Old Testament says, Jehovah is the lamp, everlasting light. You don't need the moon and the sun. Jehovah's sanctuary will be in our midst. John says, God, Jesus are the one temple, one sanctuary. God, Jesus are the one source of that one light, and Jesus the Lamb is the lamp. Okay, let's put Revelation 21, 23 back to back with 2 Samuel 22, 29. Revelation 21, verse 23, back to back. With 2 Samuel 22, 29. And the city has no need of the sun, nor of the moon, to shine on it. For the glory of God illuminated it, and its lamp was the lamb. 2 Samuel 22, 29. For you are my lamp, O Jehovah. It is Jehovah who... Wow. Hmm. What's going on here? Can you guys help me understand? What's going on here? Why is John, a Jew, taking the Old Testament language that is attributed to Jehovah alone and now a scripture? Why is he doing that, folks? Why is he doing that? Why is John taking the language of the Old Testament applied to Jehovah alone and now applying it to the Father and the Son and God and the Lamb together? Why? Why? Guys, don't let it distract you. I'm going to shut down. The buffering is bothering you. I'm going to shut down. But you see why you need to know the Old Testament? You see why you need to know the Old Testament? You see, you got to know the Old Testament inside and out in order to understand Revelation properly. You see how much of Revelation is based on the Old Testament? And if you know the Old Testament, you're going to understand Revelation better? Clear? You getting it now? You guys getting it? Not only Jesus is Lord God. No, Anna. Father and Son, these two are the one Jehovah God of the Old Testament. As well as the Holy Spirit. But is it clear? Is it sinking in before I move on to other points? So far, right? In spite of the problems, these demonic attacks, are you getting it? Making sense. Getting it, making sense. You're getting it in spite of all these distractions that say and upset me. May the Lord Jesus crush his head under his feet and cover us by his blood. Are you getting it? Revelation goes out of its way to say, Father and Son, our Jehovah God Almighty of the Old Testament. They're not the same person, different persons, but together they are the God of the Old Testament, as well as Holy Spirit. But is it making sense? And this is the Jehovah Witness Bible. This is the Jehovah Witness Bible. You see how much evidence Jesus has given, even in this perverted Bible, to the Jehovah Witnesses to show them, I am no creature, I am Jehovah God Almighty, one with the Father and the Spirit. Even in their Bible, Jesus is sovereign. 
if you know how to use it. If you know how to use it. Is it clear so far? Because I got more. I got more. Send these demons, these, these daughters of the devil, on their merry way. Okay, so if you got that, let me show you some more. So, Jonah, let's go to Jonah. Jonah chapter 2, verse 9. Jonah chapter 2, verse 9. Okay. I'm going to repeat myself more than once because there are creatures of repetition that need to hear some over and over again until it becomes second nature by the grace of the Holy Spirit. That's why I go slow and I don't I don't rush. Okay. Jonah 2 9, folks, please read with me. But as for me, with the voice of thanksgiving, I will sacrifice to you what I have vowed. I will pay. Salvation is from Jehovah. But as for me, with the voice of thanksgiving, I will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation is from Jehovah. Not from Jehovah and a creature. Jehovah is the source of salvation. It comes from him. Psalm chapter 3, verse 8. Look at Anna growing. She wants me to be the Orthodox patriarch. I don't think it's going to happen. Psalm 3, verse 8. Salvation belongs to Jehovah. Your blessing is upon your people, Selah. Salvation comes from Jehovah alone. Jehovah alone is the source of salvation. Clear? So, saints, according to the Old Testament, how many sources of salvation are there? Salvation flows from, comes from, originates from who? Jehovah alone, right? Okay. Psalm 49, verses 7 to 9. Psalm 49, verses 7 to 9. Be any focus and no side distractions, please. Psalm 49, verses 7 to 9. None of them can ever redeem a brother or give to God a ransom from him. Guys, please, in Jesus' name, read these verses carefully in the Jehovah's Witness Bible. No human being, no human being, none of them, no human being can redeem a brother, one person, or give to God a ransom for him. The ransom price for their life is so precious that is always beyond their reach, that he should live forever and not see the pit. You see what it says? No human being can offer God the ransom to save one human life. To save one human life is too costly, and no human being can pay the price to save one human life so that it lives forever. Right? Do you see it? A human being cannot save a single human life and offer a ransom for a single human life so it lives forever. Can't do it. So who can do it? Psalm 49, verse 15. Psalm 49, verse 15. Now watch where we're going with this. Watch where we're going with this. But God will redeem me from the power of the grave, for he will take hold of me. Selah. Only God and God alone, only God and God alone can redeem me from the grave and save me from the grave to live forever. No human can do it, only God. Only God and God alone can redeem me. A human being cannot redeem a single human life. Salvation is from God alone. Did you get it? Is that clear? Make sense? Salvation is from God alone. Only God can redeem a human soul. No human being can redeem a single human soul. That's why salvation is from God alone. You sure it's clear? Revelation 7, verses 9 to 10. Revelation 7, verses 9 to 10. 
Jehovah Witness Bible. Let God blow your minds away that even Jehovah's Witness Bible can be used to prove the Trinity. Revelation 7, 9 to 10. Read it, guys. Read it, please. Jehovah's Witness Bible. Revelation 7, 9 to 10. After this, I saw and look. Now notice how many human souls, a great crowd, which no man was able to number, a great crowd of human beings, so numerous they couldn't be counted. Couldn't be counted. That's how many human beings were saved. So many you can't count them. Which no man was able to number out of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, dressed in white robes, and there were palm branches in their hands. And they keep shouting with a loud voice saying, Salvation we owe, salvation belong to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Wow. What are you doing, John? What are you doing, John? Salvation we owe belongs to our God and to the Lamb. How could they say that, John? When we just read the Old Testament, salvation we owe to Jehovah. Salvation is from Jehovah. Salvation is from Jehovah. Why are they saying salvation belongs to God and the Lamb? John, why are they saying that? I want it to sink in before we read the rest of it. Can you explain that to me? John is a monotheistic Jew, and he's taking the Old Testament language about Jehovah alone and saying that language about Jehovah applies to God and Jesus. God and Jesus. You can say what the Old Testament says about Jehovah in reference to God and Jesus together. What are you doing, John? What are you doing, John? What are you doing? Does it sink it in? You see how much meat there is in Revelation? Now, remember what Psalm 49 said. A human being cannot save a single human being, let alone a multitude. No human can save a single human life. The price is too costly. But now let's look at Revelation 7 verse 9 one more time. Revelation 7 verse 9 one more time. One more time. Watch here. Joe Wooden's Bible. After this, I saw and look a great crowd which no man was able to number. Great number of human beings that you could not count. There were too many to be counted. And these human beings came out of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues. Don't forget, a great number of human beings from the whole world, from every tribe, nation, and tongue could not be counted. That's how many they were. Now let's read Revelation 7, verses 11 to 15. Revelation 7, verses 11 to 15. Watch this, George, Bellini, everyone else. Watch this. All the angels were standing around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell face down before the, land, the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Let the praise and the glory and the wisdom and the thanksgiving and the honor and the power and the strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Now watch. Watch this. In response, one of the elders said to me, these who are dressed in the white robes, who are they and where do they come from? Who are they? Where do they come from? Watch the answer. So right away I said to him, my Lord, literally, sir. It's not my Lord. It's sir. You are the one who knows. Why are you asking me? You know. I'm just visiting here. You know. I'm just visiting here. You know. Why ask me, right? Sorry, guys. I'm fighting the buffering, rebuking Satan by the blood of Jesus. Sorry about that. You know. Why ask me? You know. I'm just visiting. 
Now watch the answer. Watch the answer. Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That is why they are before the throne of God and they are rendering him sacred service day and night in his temple and the one seated on the throne will spread his tent over them. Wow. Let's look at it again. Revelation 7, 14 and 15. 14 and 15. Okay. Watch here. Look at it again. Watch here. Revelation 7, 14 and 15. Okay, read with me. So right away I said to my Lord, you are the one who knows. And he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. If you take a robe and you, you dip it in something that's red, it doesn't become white. It becomes red. But notice the blood of Jesus makes them white as snow, white robes signifying that the blood of Jesus made them absolutely pure and holy and good enough to stand before God. You catch it? The blood of Jesus made them white and pure and made them good enough to stand before God's throne and serve him. Who did that? Jesus did. How? By his blood. So his blood didn't stain them. His blood made them absolutely pure holy, righteous, sinless, and worthy to stand before God the Father. That's the power of the blood of the Lamb. Now, the blood of the Lamb, human beings. How many human beings were made absolutely pure, holy, and righteous, and good enough to stand before an infinitely holy God? How many did he do this for? Revelation 7, verse 9. Revelation 7, verse 9. Right there, Revelation 7, 9. He's going to quote it. After this, I saw and looked a great crowd, which no one was able to number. He made multitudes of human beings that cannot be counted because there are so many pure enough, righteous enough, holy enough to be worthy to stand before God the Father forever. Who made them worthy and good enough to stand before an infinitely holy God? The Lamb and His precious blood, Jesus Christ. Okay, but wait, folks. Didn't Psalm 49, 7 to 9 say, Psalm 49, 7 to 9 say, No human being is able to ransom a single human life. How then could Jesus ransom Many human souls, human lives, human bodies, so many that they couldn't be counted and make them good enough to stand before God. How? How can he do it if he's a creature or a mere human being? Let it sink in. Let it sink in. How? Because he's God Almighty. So far have you been blown away with what the Jehovah Witness Bible says in Revelation about the Father and the Son? Kimmy, I think you need to get lost and get out of here because you're a filthy dog. Was that loving enough for you? You wicked dog, get out of here. See? Right? Clear? Clear? Do you see how much meat there is in Revelation? If you know your Old Testament, if you know your Old Testament, there is meat in Revelation proving the Trinity irrefutably beyond any doubt that God is a Trinity and Jesus is God in the flesh. Right? So far, are you with me, right? Even though the buffering has been a discouragement, still by the grace of God, the connection is still good enough that we're getting all this. It will be recorded in archive and preserved in Jesus' name. Okay. few more examples where you can use the Jehovah Witness Bible to prove Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. 
Okay. Are you ready? <sighs> Titles of Jehovah in the Old Testament applied to Jesus in Revelation. Because I just want to use the Jehovah Witness Bible, so I'm not going to use anything else. Okay. Jeremiah 42, verse 5. Jeremiah 42, verse 5. Watch here. Are you ready? Titles and descriptions of Jehovah in the Old Testament applied to Jesus in Revelation. They replied to Jeremiah, May Jehovah be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not do exactly as Jehovah your God instructs us through you. Jehovah is the true and faithful witness. Revelation 3, verse 14. Revelation 3, verse 14. To the angel of the congregation in Laodicea write, these are the things that the amen says, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation by God. The faithful and true witness. Catherine, shame on you for being a filthy, wicked, rabid dog, a daughter of Satan, you filthy garbage. Praise the Lord Jesus. Okay. Don't you love it? Politically correct, folks. Lord Jesus rebuked the children of Satan from distracting us. To the angel of the congregation, Laodicea write, these are the things that the amen says, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of my God. Jeremiah, who is the true and faithful witness? Jehovah. John, who is the faithful and true witness? Jesus. David, you filthy, wicked dog. You dumb, stupid, braying ass. Why are you here? I told you not to come back. You stupid, braying ass. These guys think I'm going to say, oh, really? I'm sorry. I'm sorry because you're a little effeminate dog and you want me to just tickle yours. Okay? Anyway, these guys don't know me. She, she know me. But for the rest of you who are serious and not... Wishy-washy, effeminate, evangelic fishes. Did you catch it? Jehovah is the true and faithful witness. Jesus is the faithful and true witness. Now, Isaiah 63, verses 1 to 6. Because they're a bunch of effeminate, evangelic fishes. No disrespect to women. The women are more men than them. Isaiah 63, verses 1 to 6. Come on, guys. Read with me. Isaiah 63, verses 1 to 6. Who is this coming from Edom, from Bozra, with bright colored garments? Pay attention, guys. Pay attention. You don't pay attention, you're going to miss it. Who is this coming from Syria, from Edom? Okay. Who is this coming from Bozra? That's in Syria. With bright colored garments. This one with splendid clothing, marching in his great power. Read with me too. Why is your clothing red? And why are your garments like those of one treading the wine press? Okay? Read. Three. And now here answers Isaiah. I have trodden the wine trough alone. No one from the peoples was with me. I kept treading them in my anger, and I kept trampling them in my wrath. My garments were spattered with their blood, and I have stained all my clothing. A very violent imagery of Jehovah as a warrior who crushes his enemies under his feet, crushes them, and spills their blood all over his garments. Okay, now read. The day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my repurchased ones has come. I looked, but there was no one. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one offered support. So my arm brought me salvation my own wrath supported me. Now notice verse 6. I trampled people in my anger. I made them drunk with my wrath and poured out their blood on the ground. Okay, guys, you see what Isaiah saw? Isaiah saw Jehovah God appearing in visible shape. He saw Jehovah with a garment that was red. And then Isaiah is asking Jehovah, why is your garment red? And Jehovah said, because I couldn't find anyone to execute my wrath on my enemies. 
So I came out by myself all alone and then squashed my enemies under my feet as in a wine press. Now let me explain what that means. You would have a wine press and a wine vat, and this wine press would be filled with grapes, and then you would have people trampling on the grapes in order to squirt the blood of the grapes, the juice of the grapes, and collect it in a wine vat to get wine. You understand what the image, imagery is? Okay? So what Je Jehovah's saying is, my enemies are the grapes in my wine press, and I squash them, trample them like grapes, and their blood squirted all over my garment, making it red. Exactly, Daily Gripe. He's stopping the hell out of them. He's squashing them like grapes in a wine press, and their blood, their juice, is now sp splattered on his garment, turning it red. You see it? You understand the imagery now? So let's read Isaiah 63, 5 and 6 one more time. Isaiah 63, 5 and 6 one more time. Jehovah Witness Bible. Thank you, Prophet Muhammad. I looked, but there was no one to help. So notice Jehovah is clearly saying, no one help me squash my enemies as grapes under my feet in my wine press. No one was there. I did it alone. I was appalled and angry that no one offered support. So my arm, my own power, my own strength brought me salvation. My own wrath supported me. I, not someone else, I trampled peoples in my anger. I made them drunk with my wrath and poured out their blood on the ground. So did Jehovah use any creature to squash his enemies as grapes under their feet in Jehovah's wine press? Or did Jehovah do it alone by himself and there was no creature to help him? Sorry, hold on. Alone, right? Whose garments? Did Isaiah see splattered with the blood of his enemies? Who did he see visibly in a garment stained with the blood of his enemies? Jehovah, right? Jehovah, right? Not someone else. You sure? Wine press, robe dipped in the blood of his enemies. Jehovah alone trampling them as grapes in his wine press, right? In his anger is wrath. Okay. You sure? Revelation 19, 11 to 16. Revelation 19, 11 to 16. No, not Jesus the arm, King of Kings. Not here. Just pay attention. Revelation 19, verses 11 to 16. I saw heaven open and look, a white horse, and the one seated on it is called Faithful and True. There's that name again. And he judges and carries on war in righteousness. Jehovah Witness Bible, folks. His eyes are a fiery flame, and on his head are many diadems. He has a name written that no one knows but he himself. And he is clothed with an outer garment stained with blood. And he is called by the name the Word of God. That's Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. He's wearing a robe dipped in blood. He's wearing that robe. Now watch here. Also, the armies in heaven were following him on white horses, and they were clothed in white, clean, fine linen. And out of his mouth protrudes a sharp, long sword with which to strike the nations, and he will shepherd them with a rod of iron. Now watch this. Right? Moreover, he treads, the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty on his outer garment, yes, on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Wow. By the way, first last, how many times are you going to ban this guy? Three times? Get it, get it done with the first time. Why did it take you three times, dude? Did you catch it? Jesus is clothed in a robe 
dipped in the blood of the enemies of God, Jesus, the Word of God, the Lamb of God, King of kings, Lord of lords, he treads the winepress of the wrath of God Almighty. He's the one squashing God's enemies as grapes under his feet. Their blood splatters on his robe, turning it red. But wait, hold on. Hold on. Isaiah 63 verses 1 to 6 says, that's Jehovah. It is Jehovah wearing a, a robe dipped in the blood of his enemies. And Jehovah alone squashes his enemies under his feet as grapes in the winepress of his wrath. He did it alone. No one helped him. Why is John taking that description of Jehovah and applying it to Jesus, the word of God? Why? There goes this filthy dog of Satan, this slime. The Lord Jesus rebuke you and shame you. So why? Why, John, are you taking Isaiah 63, verses 1 to 6, a description of Jehovah appearing visibly in a robe, a robe dipped in the blood of his enemy, a description that says Jehovah did it alone, couldn't find someone, didn't use anyone, did it by himself, in his own anger, in his own wrath, in his own wine press, crushing his enemies by himself. Why would you take that description and apply it to Jesus Christ, the Lamb, the Word of God? They have no answer, King of Kings. And what Bible did we use? The Jehovah Witness Bible. Is it sinking in? How clear is the witness of Revelation that Jesus the Lamb, the Word of God, the Son of God, along with the Father, is the one Jehovah God Almighty of the Old Testament? How clear is the evidence? Alex Matos, if Jesus is created, he can't be described that way. Because you remember, Alex, in Isaiah 60, what it said? Jehovah could not find any creature worthy or good enough. He did it by himself. Clear? This is why afterwards, Protestant believer is going to beatify the thumbnail, make it very attractive because we want... Thousands to come and hear this evidence and use it for the glory of the triune Jehovah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. Final one for tonight. Final one for tonight. You ready for the final one? You ready for the final, the final one? Okay. Okay. Revelation 22, verses 1 to 5. Pay attention to verses, verses 3 and 4. Revelation 22, verses 1 to 5. Here's where I need you to focus again. Don't be distracted because we're almost done. And he showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, flowing out from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Notice how many thrones. One throne, singular. Throne, singular. Belongs to God and the Lamb. God and the Lamb occupy one throne. Right? Now pay attention in Jesus' name. One throne. Okay. Now read with me. Verse 2. Down the middle of its main street, on both sides of the river, were trees of life producing 12 crops of fruit, yielding their fruit each month. Now watch. Three and four, guys, pay attention. And there were no longer, there will no longer be any curse, but the throne, singular, one throne of God and of the Lamb. God and the Lamb occupy one throne, will be in the city. Now, here's where I need you to pay attention. And his slaves, singular, his, will offer him, singular pronoun, sacred service, and they will see 
His face, singular, and his name, singular, will be on their foreheads. Did you catch it? Okay, let me repeat. Three and four, one more time. Shame on you, you filthy, ugly demon, son of Satan. Billiam, Jesus rebuke you and shame you, you dog. Don't you love it? Keep coming, coming, man. I'll rebuke you in Jesus' name, you filthy dogs. Your father, Satan, has been crushed and destroyed by the blood of Jesus, and we are covered by the blood of Jesus, and we have overcome him. Come on now. I'm excited right now. I want to hurt somebody spiritually. I want to hurt somebody spiritually. Okay. Revelation 22, 3 and 4. Watch here. One more time. Let's unpack it. Pray attention, pay attention to the singular pronouns, his and him. And there will no longer be any curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. One throne occupied by two. His slaves, singular, his, not there, will offer him sacred service, him, not them, right? And they will see his face, his face, not their faces. And his name will be on their foreheads. Folks, are you ready to be blown away? Even though John goes out of his way to show Jesus the Lamb is not the Father. The Father is not Jesus the Lamb. They're distinct persons. He still affirms, though they're different persons, they're one God and united in one being and one essence. So now I'm going to show you that when John says... His servants, his means God and Jesus, will serve him, singular, him means God and Jesus. We'll see his face, his face means God and Jesus, right? And his name on their foreheads means God and Jesus. He's using singular pronouns for two persons, God and Jesus together as one God. Are you ready? Are you ready for the proof? His name, right? His servants, his servants giving him service. His name, his servants, they serve him. Okay. Revelation 14, verse 1. Let's see if you catch it. Revelation 14, verse 1. Then I saw, look, the lamb standing on Mount Zion. And with the 144,000 who have his name and the name of his father written on their foreheads. I'm confused. The name of God, the father, and the lamb? But it said his name, singular. His name, singular, will be on believers. But here it says it's the name of the lamb and the father that will be imprinted on believers. Specifically under 144,000. Did you catch it? Did you catch it or no? Revelation 3.12. Revelation 3.12. Revelation 3.12. Jesus speaking. Revelation 3.12. Jesus speaking. Exactly, King of Kings. Watch here now. Jesus speaking, the one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he'll by no means go out from it anymore. And I'll write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, that descends out of heaven from my God and my own new name. Wait, Jesus. Believers will have your new name on their forehead, on them. And the name of the city of your God and the name of your God, the Father? Yes. But Jesus, you told John that believers will have his name singular. How can his name now be you and the Father together? Why singular? But remember it said his servants, his singular servants will render to him sacred service. Whose servants are we? Revelation 2, 18 to 20. 
Relation 2, verses 18 to 20. Oops, I got it. Hold on, guys. Well, hold on. Relation 2, verses 18 to 20. To the angel of the congregation in Thyatira write, these are the things that the Son of God says. Son of God says. So God, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Son, is speaking. The one who has eyes like a fiery flame and whose feet are like fine copper. I know your deeds and your love and faith and ministry and endurance and that your deeds of late are more than those you did at first. Nevertheless, I do hold this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and she teaches and misleads my slaves, my slaves to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Uh, Lord Jesus, yes. Revelation 22, 3 to 4 says, His slaves will render him sacred service, and his name will be on their foreheads. Singular. But you're saying believers are your slaves. Believers will have your name and God's name on their foreheads. Why the singular then? I'm confused. What's going on? Why him, his? Now, the word sacred service in Revelation 22, verse 3, is the word latruo. Look at any Greek lexicon. Latruo means the service performed by priests. Latruo is the service, the worship that priests give to God. So what kind of service is it? Priestly service. Priests give latruo to God. It's priestly service to God. In other words, this is this type of service and worship that priests give to the true God. So you have to have priests in order to receive that kind of service. You must have priests in order to receive latruo, that kind of service. Hold on. That means if sacred service, sacred service is being given to Jesus, that means Jesus has to have priests serving him. If he doesn't have priests serving him, he cannot receive literal sacred service. Are you with me? You understand what I'm trying to say, right? Let's look at Revelation 22, 3 one more time. Revelation 22, verse 3, one more time. And there will no longer be any curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his slaves will offer him sacred service. The word for sacred service is latruo. This is the service that priests offer to God. You have to have priests to receive this type of service. If you don't have priests, then you don't receive sacred service. Therefore, if Jesus is included here, that means Jesus has priests like the Father has priests, offering Jesus with the Father this type of service because this is the service that priests offer to God. So one way that you prove that Jesus is receiving Latruo, this type of sacred service, is to show that Jesus has priests. Revelation 20, verse 6. Revelation 20, verse 6. Here you go. Happy and holy is anyone having part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no authority, but they will be priests of God and of the Christ. End of story. John, Latruel, sacred service, is what priests give to God. Yes. The only way Jesus could receive Latruel, sacred service, is if he has priests serving him. And John says, no doubt. 
I just told you in Revelation 20, verse 6, that believers are the priests of God and Christ. That means Christ with God has priests offering him sacred service. Sink in. So wait, John. God and Jesus together have priests? Yes. So God and Jesus, the Christ, have priests who offer them sacred service? Yes. So God and Jesus together receive literal? Yes, which is worship given to God alone? Yes. Then, John, why then, in Revelation 22, 3, you use the singular, his servants offering him sacred service? Why didn't you use the plural? Their servants offering them. Why the singular, John? John, why are you using the singular? I'm confused. Why the singular? If it's God and the Lamb and there are two, why then say his servants render him sacred service? Why are you using the singular, John? Why are you grouping God and the Lamb together with singular pronouns? You're not a modalist. Jesus is not the Father. They're distinct. So why then use singular pronouns? Because John is saying, that's the Holy Spirit inspiring me to use singular pronouns to show you, though they're not one person, they're two persons, they're still one God. Don't you get it? Alex, I'm ending it right now. So if you got a few more minutes, wait. Because now, let's end it. With the icing on the cake. Since Jesus is one with the Father, he's God Almighty, Joe in the flesh, one with the Father. He has priests serving him and giving him the same worship that the Father receives. So that when it says his servants render him sacred service, the singular pronouns are including both God and Christ together as a unity. Here's the final proof. Revelation 5, 13 and 14, and we're done. Revelation 5, 13 and 14. Watch here. Guys, pay attention. I mentioned this in the previous session, but we got to re-hear re it again. And I heard every creature, not some, every creature. And in case you didn't get it, he exhausts the language. Every creature in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth and on the sea and all things in them saying. So John just exhausted the language. Every creature in every created place. Every creature in the entire created order. Every creature everywhere. Every creature. No one's excluded, including me. I heard every creature in the entire creation saying to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb, wow, to the Lamb and God on the throne be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the might forever and ever. John, what are you doing? You're saying the Lamb with the one on the throne, it receives the exact same worship that the one on the throne receives for the exact same amount of time forever and ever, from every creature in existence. John, what are you doing? Why are you separating Jesus the Lamb from every creature in the entire creation and placing the Lamb on the side of God, on the creator divide, distinguishing him from every creature in creation, showing he's not a mere creature, but he's uncreated like the one on the throne is, Worthy of the same worship from every created thing for the same amount of time forever and ever. And Revelation 5.14. The four living creatures were saying amen and the others fell down and worshiped. John, what are you doing with the Bible, with the Old Testament? Why are you saying every creature in the entire creation is separate from the Lamb? So the Lamb is on the side of God not on the side of creation, so he's uncreated like God the Father is, and the Lamb receives the exact same worship that God on the throne receives for the exact same duration forever and ever.
I'm tired, John. You've exhausted me. Could Revelation be any more clear that Jesus is not a mere creature? He's God Almighty, equal to the Father and the Spirit. And these three are the one God, Jove. And I'll give you proof for the Spirit in future sessions. Even though Jesus did become flesh. So he has two natures, one person. From the Jehovah Witness Bible. Wow. Folks, if Jesus doesn't show up tomorrow in a miraculous way and finally delivers me from this wicked judge of the devil, this demon, I can be in trouble. She can get me in trouble, even though she's from another state. Pray for a miracle to silence this dog, to protect me and my children, to keep me planted here. Still coming in? Sorry about that. See, right when I prayed, and it, it, it buffed, buffered again. Is it coming in? Good. Pray in Jesus' almighty name. I need a miracle. If not, then there's nothing I can do, and I have to always look over my shoulder. Please, Lord. Right now. Hold on, guys. How convenient. When I ask for prayer, it buffs, buffers. Please, my God, I'm tired. Oh. Yep. In Jesus' name, notice it's starting to buff right when I'm asking prayer. I truly need a miracle in his grace. I don't deserve it. His grace, his mercy. Lord, please arise. Silence that dog in Illinois. Muzzle her. Remove her. Ask the Lord to fight her, to get her off my back so I can be free here. All right. You rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to end until I get this through. All right. In Jesus' name. Please, Lord. Sorry about that, guys. Man, this connection, I hate it with a passion. Okay. Can you hear me? Let me know. Put a one if you can hear me. Okay. So you can hear it? Okay. Miracle for tomorrow in Jesus' name. Silence that demon of the, of the, of the devil in Chicago. Get her off my back. Get me, grant me freedom here and favor here locally, favor here locally, that he brings my daughter sooner than later. Please, Lord, plants me, provides for my for my apartment, right? Tomorrow I need that miracle or I'm going to have to be watching over my shoulder because this demon in Illinois, rebuke her, Lord. Get her away from me, Lord, to serve you. So pray for that miracle. Pray for my holiness and purity to be more like Jesus, to trust in him more. And pray in Jesus' name to remove Martin Simon Yako for my children's life. Martin Simon Yako, he must go in Jesus' name. Convict their mother, repent, to chasing you to repent in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me know you can hear me, guys. Let me know you can hear me. The Lord chasing their mother to repent. No more men. Martin, you must be gone in Jesus' name. You must leave. You must leave in Jesus' name. Martin Simon Yako. And their mother, Michelle, my daughters. Pray for that, for that miracle. I need a miracle tomorrow or she can make my life miserable for a long time. Pray for that in Jesus' name. Pray for a provision. And I just want to share this. I didn't know this was going to happen. So let me share this now. George, you're not following me. Who said I'm going to be in court? Let me repeat this again so you can pray all right. I'm not in that state, George. I left the state. I live somewhere else. She knows it, but she still wants to haunt me. So I have to get a lawyer there to represent me. Pray God silences this dog once and for all. Two years with this demon on my back. I won't be there. I'm not there. Pray I never go there, but stay planted here, George. Please, George, understand my prayer request before I come and lay hands on you, brother. Okay? Everyone with me? Please, God. All right, let's finish this. Almost done, guys. Boy. Hold on, guys. Let me know if you can hear me because I'm buffering. Okay. Bad connection. I may stop doing it here. I'm going to go to Child of God's house until I get internet connection in my house. So sorry for all these nuisances. Let's focus in Jesus' name. Please, Lord. Today was the Greek fest. You Orthodox, you're going to love this. There was a Greek fest near my house. I didn't know it was being run by the Greek Orthodox Church. So as I went to the Greek fest, they had a booth where they had books. Guess what I picked up? Know the Faith, a book on Orthodox Christianity. Know the Faith. I picked up two books. Now, I read the section on veneration of icons. 
powerful session. Pretty much confirmed what I said in my session. Only thing that caught me by surprise, page 287. They actually believe that the commander of the Lord that appeared to Joshua was the Archangel Michael. It says, various English translations, King James Version, New King James Version, New Revised Standard Version, Good News, uh, I guess it's Good News Translation, TLB, use the word worship for the act of Joshua before Lord's commander, the Archangel Michael. I didn't know that they believed that the commander of the Lord that appeared to Joshua in Joshua 5 was the Archangel Michael. But a very good chapter was excellent, a lot of biblical proof. So I'm going to be reading this and taking notes. And then I found out that today they were having a Vesper. I know you Orthodox are getting excited now, and the Protestants are going to stone me. A Vesper for the Feast of St. Haralambos. Haralambos. February 10th, tomorrow, is the Feast of St. Haralambos. He was 113 years old when Jesus took him home, yet he was tortured for his faith but did not recant. Had a lambos. And they had Vespers commemorating his life as a saint of Christ at 5 p.m. And I actually attended because this Greek Orthodox Church does the liturgy in English. I know you're Orthodox, so you're like shocked. What? Yep, here it goes. Like I said, I will learn from anyone and everyone and trust the Spirit to guide me in all truth and show me what is correct and what is false for the glory of the triune God. So is it ironic? Tomorrow is his feast day and tomorrow I have court. So that should give you more incentive, you Orthodox, who are born of the Spirit love me for the sake of Jesus. Pray for me. I need a miracle. Otherwise, I don't have to be looking over my shoulder and that's no way to live. Pray for my angel, Sarayan Zipporah. God bless you. Watch over you, preserve you and your loved ones. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Jehovah in the flesh, one with the Father and Spirit. Amen. We love you. Forgive us and wash us in your blood. Save us from our enemies. Fill us with the Spirit to be more like you, Jesus, more in love with you, and live for you and die for you, and fight for me and my children in Jesus' name. Right? Christ is risen, risen indeed. I hope, apart from the buffering, it was still clear enough where you got the meat. In spite of the buffering, they wanted me to stop, but we didn't stop. We pressed on by the cross of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, by the Spirit. Good news tomorrow in Jesus' name. You're going to hear good news because by faith, good news. I am free because I belong to Jesus. Love you guys for the sake of the Lord. Hit the like button, re-listen to this, pass it on, and use it. More to come in Jesus' name.